It's time now for my esteemed guests to unburden themselves and tell me what they need to talk about. Jean, sorry to bring you all the way down here. We've barely had time to speak. So come on, what is it that you want to get off your chest? Um, I think, you know, over the last week, the, the issue of single sex prisons has, has um, been dominating um, lots of discussions with women. I think it's so vital that we, we discuss it um, when those women themselves can't, except for of course, the very, very brave woman at the weekend who came forward with her story about actually being um, sexually assaulted in a female prison by a male who identified as a female. Um, and I found that, I found her story absolutely terrifying because it, you know, we, we're being told, well, no, not all um, trans women are sexual offenders. But the point is that some of them are. And we had, um, you know, between 2016 and 19, there were 34 um, <clears throat> uh, trans women in female jails without a GRC. We don't actually know how many are a GRC with a GRC, a gender, a, a gender recognition, recognition certificate. certificate. So these are um, self-identified um, men who say they are women. And so these could be rapists, they could be mm -hmm. paedophiles, they could be sexual abusers, mm -hmm. they could have committed violent crimes against women, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, by the way, now I'm a woman, and they get put in a female prison. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, women don't have to pretend that that's not happening in order to be kind. And it's OK to say that some of those prisoners will assault women, and those women deserve better. And we have to speak up for those women. And, um, you know, I was... Really, really proud of James Treadwell, uh, Professor James Treadwell, Staffordshire University, spoke up on this issue. And so few um, people who should be speaking up, criminologists and politicians, etc., they're just dodging this issue. Yeah. And they're failing those, those women behind bars who are not safe. And, OK, what if it was just the one prisoner that commit? That's one too many. That's one too many. That risk is too high. Yeah. Um, so this is not about saying all trans prisoners are, are inherently violent, but it's saying that some are, and we don't have to look the other way. Well, some, some are arguably not even trans. They're just self-identifying. Um, it has, of course, been a very contentious topic online, and so we're going to delve a little bit deeper into this. Also joining us in this discussion uh, is the Diversity and Inclusion Facilitator, Katie John Wendt, who is transgender. Katie, what's your position on this? Do you think it should be the case that a male criminal, a convicted criminal, can just say, well, look, now I identify as a woman and be put into a female-only prison? Or, or do you think there's an inherent risk with that, with it being that simple? Well, it, the thing is, it, it isn't that simple. And if it were that simple, even people outside of prison would be saying, why can't I have it as easy as, as the people in prison? Um, outside of prison, you have to go through many, many hoops. You have to uh, self-ID for two years before you even get into the system. So the system outside of prison takes many years. Once in a prison, someone who suddenly then says, oh, I am now trans, yes, you. I think it's fair to take that down of the full risk assessment path and, and to have some suspicion, one might say, of it. Um, but the, the thing is, though, there, what we, ha we had this debate in part last week as well with the, with the Gender Recognition Act. The Gender Recognition Act, because it exists, does require them to initially place people in the prison according to their birth sex or GRC, which actually creates a fresh birth, sex, uh, birth certificate. Um, so that is something the prisons are obliged to consider some, placing someone in that sex assigned place. But then the next thing they're obliged to do is risk assessment. And, and this is where it seems to be failing consistently in too, in too many cases. I mean, it, it's something like over half of the, uh, the trans people in prison have a criminal, uh, violent or sexual violent history. Um, the numbers that are in women's prisons the numbers with a sex and violence history is reduced compared to that. So clearly some risk assessments has happened because they haven't transferred most of the ones with the, the violent history. But as far as I'm concerned, I, I do understand completely the position of women here that to, to some extent, nobody should be in the prison who has a sexual and violent history against women. I mean, I imagine most women wouldn't want to be sharing a prison with Myra Hindley either. It's not to say that sex and violence and abuse can, can't happen only in male born people. But it, it, people should be protected full stop. It is part of the human rights that still exist for all prisoners. Even a paedophile has human rights and is meant to be protected from the general population of any prison. But equally, the rest of the population is meant to be protected from them.